I have a web server set up here with Ubuntu and I've got it running in this virtual machine. And what I want to do is I want to be able to connect into it and I want to be able to create PHP files. I want to be able to use my source code editor. And I'm going to choose to use Nano, which is built into Ubuntu, and it's a command line text editor to be able to create my PHP pages. And of course, you can use all kinds of different software to be able to do this. Uh, some other popular choices would be like Notepad++ or even Dreamweaver. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the command line text editor. And first of all, what I'm going to do is log into my web server. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here. Let's type in my name and my password. Okay, let's do this again. There we go. And what I need is the IP address. Uh, I can see it here. This is the IP address for my ETH0 is 192.168.2.114 but if you don't get that screen you can always type in ifconfig and you can find it there under eth0 it's the inet address or your internet address so I'm going to go ahead and connect into it using putty you'll find that if you connect into it remotely it's a lot easier to work with because first of all I can go full screen and second of all I can paste things into it a lot easier so I'll go ahead and type in 192.168 2.114 which is my address I'm gonna go ahead and accept the uh, agreement there for the key let's go ahead and log in again alright so I'm logged into the same machine it's just now I'm logged in using putty and I'm gonna go ahead and maximize that okay so my web page files are gonna be located in the uh, forward slash far forward slash www forward slash html directory so let's go ahead and go to that I'm going to type in cd to change my directory I'll type in the forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and you can see my file path here is in the same location so what I'll do is just do the ls command which is going to list any files that it sees and I have a file in here called index.html. Now this is the first default web page if you're not familiar with web servers. This is the first page that's going to go ahead and load up whenever a client, such as like Chrome or Firefox or even Internet Explorer or Safari, uh, when it browses to the URL of your web server, that's the page that's going to load up first. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and click on Firefox here. And let's go ahead and type in this page. This was 192.168.2.114 and there it is. This is the default page that I see. Now I'm actually going to remove it. So I'm going to come back here to my server and let's just get rid of it. sudo, uh, I need to do sudo because I do not have permissions under my user account to be able to remove files or create files. So if I run sudo it allows me to run it as the super user or the root user for my operating system. So I'll type in sudo and we'll do rm for remove and then index.html so it's going to remove that file index.html I'll go ahead and hit enter and it's going to ask me for the password for the user account so I'll type that in alright now if I run ls again the file is no longer there let's go back to my web browser and if I refresh it here you'll notice that the file now is no longer there so it just gives me like an index here or a fi file contents of this folder and there's just nothing here. So let's go back and let's go ahead and create our first actual PHP page. As I said before, I'm going to use nano to do this. So what I have to do is type in sudo to do this as the root user and we'll type in nano which is my text editor and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. So let's call this one PHP info and I'm going to say dot PHP. So I'm going to use that PHP file extension for this page. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. So now I'm in here and I can start writing my code. Now PHP starts off with the less than symbol, the question mark, and then PHP. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter a few times. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the PHP. So I'm going to close it by doing question mark greater than. All right. So anything in between these two tags is going to be our PHP code. So I'm just going to come up here in between it and just literally write one function here 
it's going to return a lot of information. That function is just going to be called PHP info and it's going to have a left and right parenthesis and all of our PHP statements end in semicolons so I'll put a semicolon there and now I can save the page. So to save it I'm going to go ahead and do control plus X. There we go and then I'm going to press Y to save it and override it with the file name PHP info which you can see here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and that file has now been saved. In fact if I do ls I should be able to see php info.php which I see it there. So let's go back to our web client here. Let's see in my browser if I refresh the page there it is. I can see php info.php and if I click on it this is what I get. I actually get quite a bit of configuration information here about our PHP server which can be very helpful if you're looking for settings whether they're turned on or different versions or what modules have been installed and so forth uh, there's a lot of good information here now the bad part about this is there's a lot of good information and if somebody out there were to look and, and actually find this file they could get a lot of information and, and could use it for malicious intent as far as understanding what versions of stuff you have on your server so it's definitely not good to keep this file on a public web server that you have. If it's just private and you're using it for testing, by all means keep it. But if you ever have this in a production environment, you will want to remove this file. So let's go ahead and remove that file. I'll minimize that. And I'm going to come back here and let's go ahead and use the rm command again. So sudo rm and then we're going to do php info.php. Alright, if I do an ls command, it's no longer there. And if I go back to my web browser, and if I refresh this page, I can see file not found. I'm going to go ahead and step it back to just the IP address and hit enter. And there we go, we get an index, but there's no files in here. So this is going to allow me to create files. I can also delete files here right on my web server. And uh, the creating of the files, I'm going to choose to use nano because I can just use this text editor built into Ubuntu just to create the files itself.